Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I B, the Ganji, reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and uh, click on the work that we do there. Guys, I'm going to tell you what, most all the views uh, that I tend to get, uh, the most popular, are when I do the Fukushima updates. Tonight is part two of those updates, and like I said yesterday, this is a responsibility that I take very seriously. And as I covered yesterday, the Japanese government seems to want to do the most that they possibly can to prevent the people of Japanese, uh, the people of Japanese, the people of Japan, from knowing what's going on. And um, I'm not going to let that happen. So anybody that is in Japan. You feel free to get a hold of me at the correct views on hotmail.com and I will make sure that you get your uh, Fukushima news that your country may want to ban from you in the coming months or years. I'll make sure you get everything that I know whether your government likes it or not. Or what do I ask in return, uh, viewers, if I end up a suicide, a massive drug overdose, a random car crash, know that it's BS. Alright guys, I'm going to hop right into the news, which of course is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio, please make sure you not only eat at the Arcadia Grill because you will love their food, as I have since I was a small child, but also thank them for supporting the show, because that's why you're getting your Fukushima updates. Friends, I've got a lot of dislikes in part two of my last Fukushima update because I said Iran should not have a nuclear power plant because there are two factions of their own Islamic religion, at least, fighting each other. They could be attacked from outside sources such as Israel and they are in an earthquake zone. I got dislikes. Well, hey, dislikers, I was right, boneheads. AFP, quake near Iran nuclear plant kills seven, injures 30. I was very happy. That's why I'm wearing my Dead Kennedys t shirt. Uh, he's more of a greenie, in which I am not. I am a libertarian, but we both care about the environment. Yeah, well, you know what? I absolutely called this one. I also told everybody to buy Bitcoin a year ago when it was $250. And I said, flip it when it doubles. And if you're brave, hold it till it hits a grand and lose it. It hit $1,036. That means I paid for somebody's Christmas if they listened to this show and did what I asked them to do. To chain you love me. Um, I, in the same week, I called this one. A 5.7 magnitude earthquake on the Gulf Coast near Iran's sole nuclear power plant killed seven people and injured 30 on Thursday. Emergency Response Chief Hassan Kadami told state media. So far, there are seven dead and 30 injured receiving hospital treatment, the official INR news agency quoted Kadami as saying. The quake's epicenter was near Borajan, around 60 kilometers and 35 miles from Bishu, where Iran has its Russian belt reactor. Dislike it now! I called it. Building that there is going to cause the Fukushima in the Middle East. And you can hit dislike all you want. The point is, bingo, nailed it. Um, and that was that little rant wasn't dedicated for anybody else except the people that wanted to question me on whether or not it was a good idea for Iran to do this. I don't give two screws whether or not Israel has a nuclear power plant. All the scientific data points to Iran having major earthquake activity within the coming years. I am sorry that the science doesn't kiss the ass of uh, what is politically correct. 
I'm sorry if the science doesn't comply with one uh, side, the Jew or Islam. I'm sorry that the facts are that Iran shouldn't build it. Uh, friends, this is Washington's blog.com, Alternative Energy. Yeah, nuclear cheerleaders use voodoo science to pretend low levels of radiation are safe, or even good for you. Dr. Peter Karamokos, a nuclear radiologist and a public representative on the Radiation Health Committee of the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, wrote in the Today Herald last year, quote, We have to hand it to the nuclear industry for its acolytes. In the middle of the second worst nuclear power disaster in history at Fukushima, and that's a lie, by the way, it would actually be worse than Chernobyl, and with still a no end in sight, you would think that they would respond with contrition, humility, and a profuse mea culpa. Not in your life. The industry representatives and its accolades came out swinging in full denial attire. Basically, in English, what they are saying is you would expect after a disaster of the magnitude that hit Fukushima that there would be some kind of reserve happening here. No. But more insidious, it goes on, and objectionable is the creeping misinformation that the nuclear industry has fed into the public sphere over the years. There seems to be a never-ending cabal of paid industry scientific consultants who are more than willing to state the fringe view that low doses of ionizing radiation do not cause cancer and indeed that low doses are actually good for you and loosen, lessen the incidence of cancer. That is utter BS by the way my friends. It is not only a nuclear, the, not only the nuclear companies who are pushing this junk science the Department of Energy, which Ron Paul wisely wanted to get rid of for reasons that are now painfully obvious, <clears throat> is responsible for the design, testing, and production of all U.S. nuclear weapons. DOE also promotes nuclear energy and is one of its core functions. As such, it might not be surprising that they have been covering up nuclear accidents for decades. In other words, the people that are supposed to be watching over the entire industry are actually tied into the industry. Um, it says that DOE is trying to replace the widely accepted model of the dangers of low-dose radiation based on voodoo science. Specifically, DOE's Lawrence Berkeley Labs recently used a mutant line of human cells in a petri dish, petri dish which was able to repair damage from low doses of radiation and extrapolated to the unsupported conclusion that everyone is immune to low doses of radiation. Again, in English, that's why you tune in. They used already corrupted strands of DNA to prove that radiation could not corrupt DNA. Have you ever heard of a more flawed study? Good, me neither. Another DOA-funded study published, which is being widely publicized in both mainstream and alternative media, found that mice exposed to low-level radiation suffered no apparent genetic damage. Sounds impressive until you realize three basic facts. First, the mice were only studied for five weeks. The whole danger, danger of low-level radiation is from repeated exposure over a long period. A five-week study is therefore scientifically meaningless. Secondly, the study didn't distinguish between radiation coming from outside of the body and particles of radiation ingested into the body, which are known as internal emitters. I'll explain it in a minute. Internal emitters, say airborne radioactive dust, which we breathe in, or radioactive fish, which we eat, are much more dangerous, with a link, than general exposures to radiation. And there's uh, two more links after it at uh, Washington's blog. Uh, before I go on, let me let me explain. Let me uh, clarify it to you this way. If I was to shut the heat off in my home, in my studio, 
And to keep myself warm, I was going to put a, uh, a hot coal on top of this uh, monitor. Probably would not keep me very warm. And as long as it didn't burn the studio down, it wouldn't cause any harm. However, if I take the same hot coal and put it in my mouth, I would be suffering burns to which I could probably never recover from. By factoring out internal, inside you, emitters, uh, things inside you that could cause cancer, heart disease, uh, etc, etc. They don't want to publicize anything about the radiation that is inside you. What they want to say is that it's safe because we're studying limited, we are studying outside doses. To make sense of it, just remember the analogy I gave you about the hot coal. For example, it says the head of a Tokyo area medical clinic, Dr. Jun Rofus, internist and head of Kosogi Medical Clinic, said this month, risk from internal exposure of 200 to 600 times greater than the risk from external exposure. This is not some abstract theoretical issue. For example, the radioactive dust from Fukushima hit the west coast of North America days after the incident. Um, I'm getting a repeated click on my uh, live feed. If uh, when this is posted, a lot of you are going to be watching it. If it's continuing, to, if, if YouTube, which has been ruined by Google, if it's making this hard for you to watch, go to the correct views. Uh, it's the youtube.com slash the correct views. Go there, and I'm going to post the high def within 24, 36 hours of the live. All right, going on. Third, the DOE-funded researchers tested for several types of DNA damage using the most sensitive techniques available. However, DNA damage, damage is only one of the two primary ways in which low-level radiation causes damage. Again, they were hiding the other side of it. The second, and perhaps more important, and there's another link for that, more important way that low-level radiation causes damage is through lipid peroxidation. Specifically, several studies have shown that the main culprit for the damage effect of low-level radiation, that is what they're calling SAFE, is its ability to cause radiolysis of water and formation of a reactive oxygen species. Resulting in lipid paradoxation of the body, the DOA-funded study didn't test for this mechanism at all. Um, for those of you that don't speak science, it's saying that by studying the coal on top of the monitor, they are missing the damage of the coal in the mouth. They are testing for things that make them look good so that they can hide the actual data and science from you and you will be dumb enough to do things like eat Pacific seafood, which will harm you. Uh, guys, there's a lot of other information on here, but I want to go to a couple of them real quick. Uh, this is, you know, for those of you that question my sources, uh, research from the University of Iowa concluded cumulative radon exposure is a significant risk factor for lung cancer in women, even if you don't smoke, yes. Um, it does, links to articles on the health effects of cumulative doses of radioactive cesium here at Washington's blog. It says, as the European Committee on Radiation Risk notes, another source, cumulative impacts of chronic radiation in low doses are important for the comprehension, assessment, and prognosis of the late effects of radiation on human beings. Um, it says that the briefing states that doses are cumulative, citing the following military studies. I'm not going to go on to all of them, but... For those of you that want the sources, AC Directive 8063, AR119, FM402.283. 
I'm not going to go all on the science uh, uh, proof of this, but suffice it to say, for those of you that want to question my sources, you just got a whole bunch, and you just learned that this is not Sam's opinion. This is Sam's reporting. Friends, uh, this is from BusinessInsider.com. Japan wants to turn the moon into a giant power plant. I found this rather humorous, considering... Uh, the only place that they should be allowed to run a power plant is arguably the moon. Shimuzu Corporation, a Japanese architecture and engineering firm, has a plan to effectively turn the moon into a giant solar power plant, reports Inhabitant. Which is good, considering that the uh, jerks in China want to turn it into a weapon. Uh, in a nutshell, guys, this isn't such a bad idea. It really isn't. The point is, there's a certain gallows humor in the fact that it's Japan thinking of this. Um, of course they would, though. I mean, they've already uh, nuked their own country worse than we did, so of course they're going to look for alternative ways here. It proposes building a massive collection of solar panels 6,800 miles long by 12 miles wide on the moon's surface. That's certainly a heavy-duty construction job for human beings, so Shimizu plans to get the work done with robots, only invoking humans in supervisory roles. Uh, let me tell you what, that's uh, not such a bad idea, and I'll tell you why. Japan has had to lead the world in robotics because they were grossly underprepared for robotics for Fukushima, and if anybody knows the importance of Finding a way to harness energy that is not based on Earth, it would be the Russians and the Japanese. So while this looks humorous on the surface, it's not such a bad idea. Let's not have Japan starting their power plants, let's send them to the moon. Uh, once complete, the hypothetical plant could continuously send energy to receiving stations around the globe by way of lasers and microwave transmission. Which is a good idea until you remember what I reported yesterday with facts that we are in fact headed to a fascist regime in uh, Japan. Now, this idea gets around two major hurdles of solar power. As there is no weather or darkness to curb electricity production on the moon. If operating in ship size Shimuzu says it could continuously send 1,300 terawatts of power back to Earth. By comparison, the total installed electricity generation summer capacity in the United States was 1,050.9 gigawatts. Uh, so basically what they want to do is use their, uh, their newfound scientific uh, abilities to turn the moon into a solar panel instead of trying to get their energy needs by risking the entire planet, at least the northern hemisphere, with more nuclear power plants. And that, friends, is something I support. And do me a favor, my dear friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do, uh, why don't you go ahead and head over to Cool Stuff. And why did I ask you to do it in that order? Because when you do it in that order, it helps the Media Speaks grow and you get better news from us. So go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on my game. I'm going to go to uh, Cool Stuff and then a Home Decor. And let's just see what comes up. I haven't even done it before the show. We're just going to do it to see exactly what really cool stuff comes up. Um, as I scroll down the main page, I've got the Kissing Crane 2013 Ellie Christmas Trapper. I got it for $21.99. Um, the Black Legion Living Dead Machete Toxin Green Handle and Sheath, uh, Bud K, $19.99. Now, that's an amazing price. For whatever reason, my home internet is not wanting to call up the uh, actual page I want. And so we'll just keep going with the one I'm on. The Shock Light Stun Gun Flashlight, Bud K, $54.99. It's a flashlight and a stun gun. How cool can you possibly get? Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, and know that you're helping The Media Speaks. If you'd like to help the correct views, then what you want to do is go to the coolest sponsors ever restaurant, and that would be the Arcadia Grill. They're located on Court Avenue. Am I promoting them because they sponsor the show? Of course, but I'll have you know this. 
when my father passed on, and we needed to pick a restaurant that we all loved to eat at after the uh, very morbid calling hours, and we know where we picked. We picked the Arcadia Grill. Their food is that good. I'm being real. Go to the Arcadia Grill, and you will love their food. Friends of Washington'sBlog.com. This is dated December 5th, so it's like mere hours ago. They're going to dump the Fukushima radiation into the ocean, Washington's blog. And Tempto, TEPCO is planning on dumping all of the radioactive water stored at Fukushima into the ocean. This is going to... Oh, you, you already shouldn't eat food out of the Pacific Ocean. This is going to make it so that you could possibly be questioning the food <clears throat> and the entire food chain when this happens. Listen to this, friends. The industry-controlled nuclear regulators are pushing for dumping of the radiation as well. As any news reports, Juan Carlos Lentillo, head of IAEA's mission to Fukushima Daiichi, December 4th, 2013, quote, Controlled discharge is a regular practice in all nuclear facilities in the world. Pause. They are doing it knowing that one of the reasons that you, you watching this, one of the reasons that your loved ones died of cancer, perhaps the only reason that they died of cancer, is due to these routine releases. Maybe you've always lived a very healthy, non-sedentary life and you have heart disease. It is because nuclear power plants near your house are doing these normal, regular releases of poison into the air, which is why the nuclear industry needs to be shut down. It says, what we are trying to say here is to consider this as one of the options to contribute to a good balance of risks and to stabilize the facility in the long term. In English, which is why you tune in, it could be a knife to the heart to leave this water here. So what we're going to do, since we can't have you dying of a knife in the heart, is to shoot you in the face with a bazooka. That way we won't have to stab you in the heart. Am I saying that their answer is as toxic as leaving the water there? No. What I'm saying is that their answer is more toxic than leaving the water there. Why? Because if they leave the water there, they will find that some of it may leak. If they do this, all of it, obviously, is going to go where? Can't argue that, can you? Uh, this is from Sinuchi Tanaka, chairman of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority, December 4th. You cannot keep storing the water forever. We have to make a choice comparing to the risks of vaults. Shut your nuclear industry down! And then there's uh, quotes in here from Nihawa, NHK, Japan Times says, of course, public acceptance for this purpose is necessary. Yeah, well, um, unfortunately for them, uh, uh, according to AFP, uh, December 4th, the local fishermen, neighboring countries, and environmental groups all oppose the idea. And that's important because other countries should have a say. Because other countries will be poisoned by this as well. They're being nuked just like it was a bomb. Um, Arnie Gunderson says they want to dump all Fukushima radioactive water into the Pacific. It says TEPCO, it will be diluted and then released. Uh, the professor suggests pumping it into the deep oceans. Awful idea. And it says in the real world, there is no safe level of radiation. Dr. Arjun is a link to that. Dr. Arjun Majajani a recognized expert on nuclear power who has testified before Congress, another source for you doubters, served as an expert witness in Nuclear Regulatory Commission proceedings and been interviewed by many of the largest news organizations. Uh, he told PBS in March, quote, We actually sent a proposal to Japan two years ago some colleagues of mine and I saying you should park a super tanker or a large tanker offshore and put the water into it and send it off someplace else 
so that the water treatment and the water management is not a huge constant issue and the Japanese declined. Therefore, the idea that you must pump it into the ocean in order to keep it safe has been proven a lie, as I just read. I'm going to go on. TEPCO, which is GE, if you own stock in GE, pour your money out of it, or you are supporting it, you are part of the problem, and you are scum, um, with no financial incentive to actually fix things. Uh, GE has been insanely irresponsible and has only been pretending to contain Fukushima. And there's more links. And it says, unfortunately, Japan has devolved into crony capitalism, that is to say fascism and even tyranny. It says, postscript, in related news, the Japanese government has embarked on a massive program of burning radioactive waste throughout Japan. They're doing that instead of encapsulating it in glass or otherwise containing it. Encapsulating in glass, by the way, does work. By burning it all over, Chris Busby has said that one of the reasons that they're likely doing this is because, let's say that right here, where this nuke symbol is. That's Fukushima. Well, if a bunch of people get cancer and want to sue TEPCO, they're going to be able to do so if they're all in that region. However, if you're a scum, like they are, and you burn it, then you can infect the entire area. Therefore, Fukushima can't be to blame. It's all over. That's why they're burning it. And that's the correct view! Friends of Natural News, I've got three more stories to zip through. Fukushima director warns of Britain it may be next. The great news here, yeah, right. In an interview with The Guardian, the man in charge of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has warned that a similar disaster could easily befall any of the world's new power plants. Commenting on the United Kingdom's plans to build a new generation of nuclear plants in Somerset, Tokyo Electric Power Company President Naomi Haros said that the British nuclear power industry needs to be prepared for the worst. What happened at Fukushima was, yes, a warning to the world, he said. Um, and it goes on to explain what Fukushima was. Obviously, you know, an earthquake blew out the reactors. It was not the tidal wave. It was, in fact, the earthquake. And that's important. Heroes encouraged nuclear power operators to try and think of any possible thing that could go wrong and plan for it, noting that a few extra simple safety measures could have presented the Fukushima disaster. Yes, like not having any nuclear power, you bastards. Um... Try to examine all the possibilities, no matter how small they are. And don't think any single countermeasure is foolproof, he said. Think about all different kinds of small countermeasures, and not just the big solution. And there's not a single answer. Yet there is. And not having a new plant! We made a lot of excuses for ourselves. Looking back, seals on doors, one little thing could have saved everything. Yeah, like not having it. They don't even have seals on the door for a flood, and they built a new plant on the seaboard. I mean, come on now! Even with such preparations, he warned, it is a mistake to think of nuclear power as 100% safe, no matter what the nuclear industry might claim. Well, that's important, because if it can't be 100% safe, and it's going to kill that many millions of people, then let's not have it at all. We have to explain, he says, no matter how small a possibility, what is this safety barrier is broken. He said, we have to prepare for a plan if something happens. Yeah, how about not opening it? This makes me sick. Now listen to this. And they're removing the fuel rods from Fukushima now, and it says removing the 1,500 fuel rods from Reactor 4 which was seriously damaged by explosions early in the meltdown, is considered a highly dangerous procedure. Experts have warned that if any of the rods break or even are allowed to come in contact with air, they could release huge amounts of radiation. Therefore, we know and not if you build them. Friends, uh, this is from The Guardian, who has you know, done a lot of great work. Uh, the Guardian, while they, I have my problems with them, they're the ones who have done much for the hero that is Mr. Snowden, so I do have a lot of respect for this paper in that regard. North Korea restarts a nuclear reactor, atomic watchdog warns. Guys, the North Koreans could not build a proper water balloon. 
And now look at this. Activity has been observed at a North Korean nuclear site consistent with an effort to restart a reactor. The International Atomic Energy Agency Chief Ikaya Amano has said. North Korea announced in April that it would revive its aged react research reactor at the Yongbyon nuclear complex, which experts say is capable of producing plutonium for bombs. They're more likely to bomb themselves than anybody else but said it was seeking a deterrent capacity. Guys, I mean, if you see uh, like 10 rowboats in the ocean, that's probably the North Korean Navy. Amano said the Vienna-based IAEA continued to monitor developments at Yongbyon, mainly through with satellite imagery. It says activities, quote, have been observed at the site that are consistent with an effort to restart the 5MWE reactor, Amano told the IEA's 35-nation board. It goes on. However, as the agency has no access to the site, it is not possible for us to conclusively determine whether the reactor has been restarted, he said. The Yongbyon reactor has been technically out of operation for years. North Korea destroyed its cooling tower in 08 as a reference, as a confidence-building step in talks with South Korea, China, the USA, Japan, and Russia. When North Korea said it planned to revive the reactor, nuclear experts said it would probably take about half a year to get it up and running if it had not suffered significant damage from neglect. Oh, this sounds safe. It's like giving a baby a hand grenade. The U.S. Korea Institute at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced Internal Studies said a satellite image from 31 August showed white steam rising from a building near the hull that houses the reactor's steam turbines and electric generators. Basically, they're too proud to admit that they can't afford nor do they have the knowledge to build a new reactor. And nobody trusts them enough to let them do it because they're idiots of the government, not the people. So what you've got is uh, them just too proud to admit that uh, they can't do it. So they're going to risk the entire population within God only really knows how far by starting a reactor that they know they shouldn't restart. The reclusive Asian state has defied international warnings not to build atomic bombs and long-range missiles. It is believed to have enough visual material to build 10 nuclear bombs. Guys, they're not going to blow anybody up with themselves. Uh, Japan brainstorms new measures to stop radioactive leak at Fukushima RT December 3rd. Japan's government panel offered in new measures to stop radioactive water leaking from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. Officials said the plant could completely run out of storage space for contaminated water within two years. Well, God forbid you'd build a bigger containment or use a tanker, as mentioned earlier. The new measures include ideas picked from 780 proposals from around the world that were requested by the industry ministry as Japan seeks international guidance to tackle the nuclear crisis. The measures were presented in a draft reported from the contaminated water panel on Tuesday. It says, after the earthquake that triggered the tsunami, well, we all know what happened to cause it. One of the new measures proposed by the panel includes covering the ground with asphalt to reduce rain flow. Well, listen to this, there's holes in that theory. According to experts, the underground water that flows into the reactor and turbine basements is mostly rain water. However, the panel has not yet developed a specific plan and cannot provide the details, including the extent of asphalt coverage, said panel official Yushiyaguchi Taiyaguchi in AP reports. Moreover, the decreasing amount of groundwater could lead to the ground sinking in places where hundreds of storage tanks with highly contaminated water are located. They should have used the tanker, as mentioned earlier. The expert urged that measures to prevent sinking incidents should be calculated before implementing uh, such a proposal. The panel draft also included a proposal to build more tanks with a larger capacity. Oh, maybe we should build bigger tanks. No shit. And to install undersea filters for the contaminated water that is seeping into the Pacific. Pacific. Another suggestion was to establish a team of experts that would deal with the large amounts of tritium, a radioactive isotope contained in the water. Some experts suggest simply releasing the contaminated water into the sea. Oh yeah, why not? 
Such tritium is a low energy isotope that is considered to be less dangerous than uh, cesium and strontium. Uh, do me a favor, look at yesterday's show, at December, December 5th, and uh, see how safe you think it is when you uh, read about the uh, moose dying. Moose, big moose, dying. Uh, starfish dying in droves, and then get back to me about how safe it is. The tritium can be safely released into the sea, lied Dale Klein, idiot, former head of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. What else has he got to say? The United States had to face the issue when they had Three Mile Island. He said, no, they did not have to face it. It wasn't nearly as bad, and Three Mile Island should never be opened anyway. It says, riddled with problems, the complex process of cleaning up and decommissioning the plant consists of many components, including the removal of thousands of fuel rods from a cooling pool, which could create the death of the northern hemisphere. Guys, the last thing I'm going to get to, thank you for listening to the massive Fukushima update. And this is from RT.com. TEPCO accepts U.S. offer to aid dangerous Fukushima cleanup. Yeah, well, now it's too late. Of course they would. Tokyo Electric Power Company, which is GE, has accepted Washington's offer to help with the cleanup and decommissioning of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The move comes as TEPCO prepares for the major operation of removing fuel rods from Unit 4. TEPCO President Naomi Harris said that the decision was made Friday when U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Meniz visited the plant. Quote, Secretary Meniz and I became consistent through our talking today that the necessity of further strengthening cooperation to contribute to the nuclear power and decommissioning industry and not only between the two countries but throughout the world by sharing the accumulating technology and knowledge towards the stability and decommissioning of the power station, uh, Harris said in a statement to TEPCO's website. Of course, when everybody was begging them to take advice before it had gotten this bad, they wouldn't listen. In 2012, Japan and the U.S. created a bilateral commission to strengthen engagement on civil nuclear issues, yeah, and to not test our food while they feed it to us. TEPCO's president said he has high hopes that Japan will benefit from the U.S. to experience the expertise at Fukushima Daiichi. Yeah, move! Um, it appears that the spent nuclear fuel will begin to be removed from Unit 4 as scheduled, and it has been. Said Mani is the highest ranking U.S. official to visit Fukushima since the 11th earthquake. Friends, if you've learned nothing else from this, it's that anything that has to do with nuclear power is an absolute disaster. Um, it's obviously the worst disaster in all of recorded history. And almost everybody listening to my voice is too dumbed down by top 40 mind drop like Usher in the weekend to even know what I'm talking about. For those of you that do know, do me a favor. Hit share. Hit remix. Remix puts this on your YouTube channel. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle Court, like and myself. We release stuff all the time. Um, if you can donate to this show, please do. Go to the correct views of Hotmail.com. And uh, every penny you give to me goes to a better show. Thanks for listening, my friends. Uh, I'm in this. I'll keep reporting on it. Good night. God bless.